Hey, hey everyone, it's that guy over there bringing you game two of the Sunflower GT. Uh, this time I take up my Lizardmen against a army of Wood Elves. Uh, so, um, as you might have noticed from my battle reports, I feel like about half of them against Wood Elves. So, uh, but that's good. Uh, they're a fun army to play against. I feel like uh, the army style is very similar to what I'm trying to build with my Lizardmen. So, uh, without further ado, I'll go ahead and uh, show deployment. Uh, this is before Vanguards. Um, as you can see, he's, uh, uh, you know, I'll go through the list real quick. He's got a, sp a Spellweaver with the Book of Asher, which is uh, brilliant. Uh, you know, I was surprised when he didn't put him in the woods, though, because I, th I think that stacks, because when they're in the woods, they get plus one to bonus to cast. Uh, so with the Book of Asher, it's like having a level six. So I was kind of surprised when they weren't in the woods. Uh, but he's on his steed. He's with the uh, Sisters of the Thorn there. He had a Spell Singer with a Dispel Scroll, Lord Metal, uh, Glade Captain with a Hail of Doom Arrow, which, you know, now I'm looking at his list, I don't remember him shooting that off. Uh, five Glade Riders in Ambush, um, three units of ten Glade Guard with various arrows. Um, he had little markers. One was a, like a target, archery target. One was a bonfire to show what kind of arrows they had. Uh, some deep, He had a nine-man unit Deep Wood Scouts, uh, a five-man unit, another ten-man unit, and then uh, five Sisters of the Thorn, two units of five Wild Riders with uh, Magical Banners, and two units of ten Way Watchers. So, uh, interesting scenario. You, you got these cards, right? And so I used the card where you had to kill their most expensive unit. So, uh, in the you, you can see he's kind of putting the last few miles on the table. That was the unit uh, that we ended up deciding was the most expensive because the two units of 10 um, Way Watchers were the most expensive non-character units. So that's the unit I ended up having to go for. I'll show you another picture here. Um, again, before Vanguards. I think I had to keep my general alive or something like that. So Because I, I didn't explain this before, but it's out of five points, and then you could get... If you got your special objective, you got plus one. And if they did not get theirs, like if you prevented them from getting theirs, then it was another plus one. So you could have seven max points. Um, and then you always at least got one point uh, for playing the game. So there you can see the Sisters of the Thorn unit right is right in the middle. And he's got Wild Riders on either side, various archer units. Um, I scouted up, up my chameleons. Up on top of the hill, this hill had a little smiley face shiny sticker on it, which meant it was infinitely high. So that was obviously to my advantage between the, the house, um, the infinitely high hill, and then the, the trees that he placed. Because um, the only unit with true flight arrows was that one. You can see it with the round green base kind of towards the middle there. Um, so anyway, I was looking forward to it. There's another picture on this side. I, I kind of put my chameleon skinks up there just to kind of to force back his vanguards because I didn't want his wild riders charging through my lines too quick. Uh, here's after vanguards. He vanguarded his uh, wild riders forward because I kind of wanted those guys to come towards me so that I could deal with them and then using the cover of the house and after they were dealt with and kind of move up around the house and take out the uh, really his big expensive units is is uh, obviously the wild or the way watchers, which were on the other side of the table, but all his characters were over here. So uh, really, the middle, all units were going to be either going left or right. The middle was was you know kind of empty. Um, all right, so what else get the first turn? Um, I'm I'm showing just uh, some of his preemptory moves here. Uh, you see the unit behind the wall, that's one unit of Way Watchers, but the one on the far left behind the Wild Riders was the one I uh, I needed to get in order to complete my little special objective there. Um, he moves back his Wild Riders, which uh, I guess that, you know, I kind of was just kind of wanted them to come forward, but that's all right. Um, I can kind of use the house to my advantage. Um, I don't remember if he moved. He might have just marched up to the house with the Wood Elves this turn, that little unit there. I don't think he marched into it. Uh, and then this unit with the True Flight Arrows is going to be giving me problems uh, this game. His BSB's there. You see it with the big banner. Um, pretty cool looking banner. And he has, the again, the Hail of Doom Arrow. 
Let's show some more pictures of what it looks like from this side. He moved that the sister of the thorn right up to the table edge, and they pretty much stay there the whole game. Um, here's that the unit of wild riders on the left flank kind of moves to set up some charge arcs. Uh, they had vanguarded, so they couldn't charge this turn. Uh, that's all right. I'll, I'm just gonna, I plan on flying over them and then maybe chaffing them up. Uh, the rest of his units move back. That unit that I have marked marked for death there in the back left corner is as far in the back corner as he can get them, uh, which is, I don't know. <laughs> I'll get them. Somehow I'll, I'll try to fly over there or something, but uh, there's a lot of shooting I have to get through. Look at all those archers. Uh, so his magic phase, he puts Miasma on the Chameleon Skinks, uh, which is you know, I, I can understand trying to slow them up, but uh, we talked about it after the game and just watch. It seemed like every spell he cast and every shot he fired was at this chameleon skinks on the top of this infinitely high hill. Um, it, we kind of talked about it afterwards. Uh, the true flight arrows uh, actually never shot them. Um, but yeah, it was like every time he cast Melkoth, this flying miasma, it was on that unit and other spells, as you'll see. Uh, here's some shots fired into the uh, Ripperdactyls there, uh, which which hurts because two of them dead. Um, lucky that they're frenzied so they don't panic. Here's a really blurry picture to show you picked off two of my chameleon skinks. And we move on to my turn. So you see I, if you look there in the distance that I'm down to six Ripperdactyls, but I've got one unit full uh, facing that you know, in the back corner. So if I can get them in, that would be key. I'd probably be able to get my objective pretty quick. Uh, the rest of my army is kind of moving to hide behind that infinitely high hill. The chameleon skinks are down to, I think he did ballistic skill. Anyway, I, I don't really move them. I kind of like them where they're at. Uh, but the rest of my army kind of moves forward, as you see. Uh, sorry for the other another blurry picture. I'm just chaffing up the wild riders just because I don't want them to get into... I, I'd really hate for them to take out that croc scoring unit, so I, I just need to hold them up a little bit longer. Here's my middle. So I think I boosted the ballistic skill of the Razor Dons by one. Um, and then I failed to get off the walk between worlds because I was trying going to try to be cute and hop him forward and then light up his true flight arrow unit. But he saw that coming, so I was out of range, so he let my hand of glory go, and then he... Uh, dispelled the, the Walk Between Worlds. This is Wood Elf's turn two. His, uh, it's a cool conversion. Uh, Wood Elf torsos on horse bodies, kind of like centaurs, but like good, not like centigores, like the good conversion of centaurs. Uh, so anyway, they came on right behind here, so that's going to cause me a problem. The Wild Riders charged my skink, chameleon skinks, of course. Uh, not sure what he's, I think he's rolling the dice right there or something. Um, moves his wild riders back up to about where they were before um, to, ca to cause more problems. So now I've got two cavalry units that are going to be behind my lines here pretty quick. His uh, unit for sure marches, in, or they move into the building for sure this time. Uh, he's got a little five man unit, deep wood scouts there, and the true flight arrows. They're standing fast. You see the sisters of the thorn there perched. On the edge of the table and I'm taking a picture here because he's I don't remember maybe he didn't do any wounds uh, but anyway we took took some fire there I'm sorry maybe I was just taking a picture because here's magic magic uh, he cast curse of honor here on my chameleon skinks and I'm not gonna move them because they'll have to take dangerous train checks and now they're minus one to hit the unit inside the building picks off my character on the right, but my other skink chief, the one with the egg of Quango, is still alive. So that's good. He passes a panic tech check. True flight arrows. So the true flight arrows pretty much for the rest of the game are going to be shooting at my slans. I'm going to call it a bunker where there's only 10 guys in it. So they pick off a couple here, which I want to say is kind of unlucky. Here's an, another guy. I think the centaurs there shot him down. Which again, those are Glade Riders. I'm calling them Centaurs, but they're Glade Riders. Uh, Alright, so here's the shooting. I takes down one of my 
Ripperdactyl, so one, two wounds there. Uh, yeah, just the same picture. And then the uh, unit there with the uh, flaming arrows, they just take them down. So they they didn't have the, they didn't get plus one to hit or to wound against me or anything like that. They were just flaming, but um, yeah, they just took me down there. Uh, this is me taking off the chameleon skinks. Um, they overrun, as you see, both those units pass their panic. Or maybe they're just out, either way. I was very careful this tournament to keep everything outside of six inches of each other, if I, especially if I knew it was going to die. So uh, we go back to the beginning of my turn. And these Ripperdactyls, which were going to move up to threaten that unit I had targeted, they fail their frenzy, frenzy tech and... Uh, the only unit they were like just barely within range was this unit here of uh, Deep Wood Scouts, and um, I actually made my charge roll, so I, I got into their flank. So while it's not going to get me the bonus point, uh, I'm pretty pretty happy about this because if I'd failed the charge, then it would have just cost me a turn. But at least I, I get a unit out of the deal. My single Ripperdactyl flies up, uh, again, to put pressure on these Deepwood Scouts. The rest of my army marches towards them because I'm just trying to box them in somewhere. Uh, they have two hand we weapons, so in combat they get 10, 15 attacks, rerolling to hit. So um, it's, pretty, it's pretty brutal, especially for these units to take in close combat. So plus all the standard shooting coming in and... Uh, the differing, they can fire like two shots or they can fire one with minus three armor save. And yeah, so this is going to be hard for me to get to. Um, I'm not sure what happened to the other unit of, uh, yeah, I'm going to go to the next page. The, the other unit of Way Watchers, they're just gone. So yeah, I'm not really sure what happened to them. I, I must have either shot them down. You know what? I think I... I think I panicked them off the table, actually. I think I got a spell off to the skink priest there, and they, like a soul quench, and then they just ran off the table or something. So that definitely happened with at least one unit here, is that they panicked off the table. So, But as you can see, he's down one unit of Way Watchers already. Um, you can see my, this, this is probably the last picture you're going to see of my skink chief with the Ega Quango. Um, I perched him there on the edge of the table, and uh, my opponent bumped against him, and he took a dive off the edge there. So you'll see him here in a few slides. But um, we laughed about it. We, you know, I my opponent was very apologetic, but uh, you know, not not a big deal. I I kept telling him that they came they came to me in all in pieces. I can put them all back together. But yeah, so let's just have a moment of silence there for my pterodon chief. And I turn around to face these threats. So I put a unit of skinks up to chaff up the wild riders. And uh, I turn around my units here to, to deal with this threat here coming up behind me. Because I can't let these guys get into my rear, especially my slam bunker. Um, okay, yeah, here's definitely the last picture you're going to see of this guy. Um, so between magic and shooting, uh, I think I'm up to plus two blisk skill for the Razor Dons. They just they just blow that unit apart. So uh, I, th I think a couple of them survived, but then they ran off the table. So uh, good for me, I guess. Uh, shooting these ten skinks managed to kill off two Wild Riders. So that's that's pretty key. Uh, ho I'm hoping for a good stand and shoot, and then maybe uh, if they don't kill them all. In the combat, maybe I can get another one down. So, uh, pretty good. Um, these guys had moved over, and they were able to shoot off like two two wild riders. So I'm down to from ten wild riders to six. So that's pretty good. And uh, yeah, we. So the I think I think I skipped a turn here. That's why I go from Wood Elf three to Lizardman three. Uh, he had flipped those Wild Riders around. Uh, really, not a lot going on shooting and magic wise. 
and uh, through magic and shooting, I'm able to uh, kill off this unit of wild riders here. Um, I walk between the worlds, these guys forward, and then they just kind of blow them apart. So we move the movement tray here in a little bit. Um, I'd also charged because they shot into my my skink bunker with the for the slan with the true flight arrows. Um, I had charged in the rear with my uh, egg of Quango guy. He he kills a f quite a few of them, but uh, I think he had one wound left because the deep wood scouts had lit him up. And with the armor piercing, he's got a three plus save, so he he got a wound through. And then um, after the hits from the egg of Quango, I get killed. But uh, yeah, at least I took off the back rank, which is good. Um, I think I'm in the zone now where I'm not going to be uh, like they, he can't look out, sir. I think because he doesn't have five rank and file models anymore. Um, and then I'm able to kill off some of the guys inside the building. Um, if you remember the picture previously. He charges in. I blocked up my Croxagore so he couldn't get around them with the Wild Riders, so he charges them. Uh, they don't do any wounds on the stand and shoot, which is good uh, for, for my opponent. Uh, so they're going to walk the, walk the floor with them. Uh, the, this unit kills off the unit of Skinks in between me and the Croxagore. Uh, maybe, that was a, maybe that wasn't the best decision because... Uh, now the Croxagores have a path through. Um, you know, when I when I push the picture here, maybe some other unit had killed those skinks off, and then, oh, you know what? I pulled those skinks back to get in front of the Wild Riders, and then those Way Watchers lit up my Croxagore and, and take off one of them and put some wounds on the other. So at, after combat, this skink, there's one skink left running away. Um, I need to do a better job of turning my guys away so that you can tell they're running. Um, I left them usually facing the way I was facing them just because I, I guess I was so sure that they would rally on leadership five, but oh well. Um, he, so my, this unit had fled off the, or they'd pursued off the table. I remember they got that charge in the flank of the deep wood scouts. So they go off the flank of the table. So they fly back here. Um, and let's get some shots here. Uh, take one of them off. So now I'm down to one Ripper Dactyl left on the table. So, um, yep, at the end of what else, turn four, he slides his Sister of the Thorn back behind his uh, True Flight Arrow bunker. Uh, he's got a unit of Deepwood Scouts, a unit of archers inside the building, and then those Sister of the Thorn with the Wizard. Um, and. So you got the unit in the middle, and then the way watchers on the left, and then uh, just just a couple of way, way wild riders left. So um, so far, the go going to the left and right corners is working. Um, I'm just down to a few units left. So my turn five, I charge into the way watchers, and I finally make it in with that unit I marked. It costs me two of my Croxagores, but I've got two full strength Croxagores, who hopefully will be able to. Uh, power through these guys so we'll see because again like I said they have two hand weapons each um, so I weird weird uh, rules here so I was an inch away I declare a charge on the way watchers because I was trying to get them in too I fail my charge and I rolled like double ones or something or triple ones for my charge but I can't move within an inch of this unit, so I, I don't move anywhere. So I think we played that right, but maybe if you guys uh, have... I mean, do I hop over the unit? Do I actually charge that unit? Because they weren't the target of the charge at all. I was trying to do a long bomb charge. Um, regardless, it'll kind of keep them facing this way. One more turn. Um, oh, I think he withered them too. That's how he picked off so many of them. See, see that spell card with the two on it that's minus two toughness so that's why they went down so easy uh, these guys charge into the building um, I kind of caught a lot of people off guard was that the razor dons were actually pretty pretty brutal in close combat as well so 
I mean, strength five, initiative four. I mean, what what else? Always strike first, but still, it was six strength five attacks, and then nine strength three attacks from the skin handlers going inside the building because you can only send like three at a time or something like that. So anyway, they're gonna try to take the building back for me. Uh, I march this unit up with my battle standard bearer. He's the blue skink with the banner. Um, then I march them so I don't get to shoot. And I was trying to get out of their line of sight arc. I was like, crap, you know, now I'm going to lose my BSB in this whole unit. Um, but uh, I just need to, need to get better at moving these not skirmisher units. Um, yeah, I, I just need to get better at it. The rest of my units move up. I'm I'm doing the Zulu Don envelopment here of his last remaining uh, archers and his um, sister the Thorn, who really at this point don't have a lot of places to go. Because um, I'm not looking to charge him. I'm just looking to shoot at him, and it's hard to get si outside 12 inches of me at this point. So after combat, um, I kill a bunch of the archers in the building, but I don't chase them out so I push back an inch the uh, you know my shooting kills off a couple archers here and there kills off a couple of the sisters of thorn see how he's done the two and at this point um, I didn't mention it in the last game and I didn't mention it in this game but somewhere along the line both of them had miscast and lost several wizard levels so the last game and this game he my opponent would miscast and lose wizard levels, which really helped out with casting spells. Um, that's why you see some dice piled up there next to the to that white horse. So, so I gotta say there. So after combat, I peel off the back rank there, but uh, I lose a whole Croxagore and take a wound on the one on the left. Um, they are pretty rough in close combat. I mean, fifteen rerolling to hit attacks. Um, yeah, so, um, this, this is including, cause I charged, no, I charged this turn. Um, this must be, I must have the turns here out of order because I, there's no way I could have killed off five of them if the, both of them had died cause they only get three attacks or maybe I just rolled two sixes and then. Got enough attacks with that in the stomp that I peeled off the back rank. Regardless, I'm hoping to win this next turn because um, I, I really don't have that many turns left. Um, yeah, this should definitely say Wood Elves turn five. <laughs> so that was the end of the combat over there. Um, so two combats with the Croc scores. Uh, these um, Wood Elves are about to charge into the skin croc score unit, um, as you can see here, because again, this Wood Elves turn five, uh, stand and shoot and kill two of them. Wood Elves turn, uh, no, this must be Lizardman turn now, because he peeled off all these guys. I killed two of the Deepwood Scouts. Uh, I, I, I managed to win this combat here with the Wood Elves, or the Way Watchers, and, and pursue them off the table edge. Which is great because now I get my added benefit there. Um, okay, final turn of the game. What else? Uh, he hides that sister of the thorn unit. He charges in. I kill a couple. Of the, the, see that tree? The tree is the only thing that left. So it's actually a deep wood scout, but they charge into my skinks. So I kill two of them off on the Overwatch, um, which is which is pretty good, I guess, for these little skink guys. Uh, and then he whiffs in combat. So we're still stuck in combat there. Um, and I'm going to be charging in with those Salamanders in the building next turn. Uh, we're trying to wrap up quickly here. I think that's why my picture is getting a little disconcerted. Um, this is also the turn that I kill the one way or Wild Rider that made it into that Scrox Square unit. He, he gets pulverized by the Croxagore. Um, he kills a few skinks off, but then the Croxagore kills him. Uh, here we go on my turn between shooting and magic I kill off the rest of his uh, his his characters there and his uh, true flight arrow unit um, inside the building uh, I, I wipe out the uh, remaining archers 
in this combat, I somehow managed to kill off the last Wood Elf, and he doesn't kill any of my guys in return. In uh, so Skinks actually won a close combat, which wasn't against a Stegodon. <laughs> uh, I'd reformed after I'd killed the Wild, the wild Rider, so I moved this guy up towards uh, the uh, these archers here. They're really just the last unit on the table because I, um, I must have used the Razor Dons to kill off the uh, Sisters of the Thorn once I was inside the building with all those shots. So uh, I decided not to charge because I didn't want to lose the points. At this point, I was far enough ahead. I went and shot at him a few shots to cause some casualties, and uh, they didn't panic. So anyway, uh, here's a picture at the end of the game. It's really just... The, you can see what remains really not that much of my army. All the Reprodactyls are dead. The Croc score is down to one guy with like one wound left. Um, a lot of my Skink Skirmisher units are gone. Um, but it's just that one unit of archers there. So uh, I managed, but, I mean, between the, the Slan and the Razor Dons, I managed, that's, I, that's a thousand points right there. So I, I managed to take this one, another uh, seven to one win for the Lizardmen. So. Uh, just with some closing thoughts, uh, I talked to my uh, opponent afterwards, um, kind of things that I could do better, things that he could do better. Um, and he, he had mentioned it's very hard to, to know where to go, uh, or which segments to, to attack, or especially with the Wild Riders, because I thought if he'd put the Wild Riders together, maybe they could have been a lot more effective than if they'd been separated like that. And really it comes down to when I play against Wood Elves, because that's what, that's what I was telling them, when I play against Wood Elves, this is how I think so. My list is similar. You have to segment the table. So like when I first, when I looked at the table, I said, you know, he's got the unit on the far left that I need to kill to get my bonus point, and then all of his casters on the right. So really those were the only two table sections worth going into. So uh, the effect of that was every unit in the middle of the table lived. But all the the units in the right and the left uh, died during the during the battle, um, except for the unit I, I was forced to charge. Um, so when I was saying against against me, it's hard because I have so many drops. But he should have pushed everything towards the slan because if he killed the slan and those razor razor dons, um, those are most of my points right there. That's a thousand points. Um, the Chameleon Skinks were fire magnets, so I think they're definitely worth keeping in my list. And I talked to him about it afterwards. It's like, man, every mist mystifying the asthma, every uh, curse of honor here, a lot of shots went into those units of Chameleon Skinks. Um, I think people are just trying to clear them out of the way, but they're harder to clear out than your average scouting unit. So um, maybe that's kind of where the trap is. They're like, okay, let me. Once I clear these guys out, I'll focus on everything else, and then it takes several turns to clear them out. And it's turn three or four, and they're like, "Oh, I need to focus on something different." And by then, you're you're in position. So I I, I kind of like the Chameleon Skinks. Uh, the Croxigors, they're the ones who made it into the unit I needed to kill, and uh, in order to get my bonus point, because you remember I I sent two units of Ripodactyls, a unit of Skinks, and then the Croxigors, and they were the last two Krogs Girl models made it in, and somehow I was able to push through there. Uh, That's kind of a harrowing thing. It's kind of a charge of the light brigade in a way. And then finally, the building. So I, I'm kind of glad that uh, I didn't run into anybody with like a big unit inside of a building because I really don't have any way to get like 20 orc savages out, out of a building or Warriors of Chaos, I, 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 I really don't have any way of doing that because you, you get so many not negative modifiers shooting at it. Uh, so um, I guess maybe that's something I need, need to take into consideration. I was able to push them out after a couple turns with the Razor Dons, but need to have a better way of dealing with buildings. Um, so anyway, it's just something for me to think about. So anyway, I, I'm sitting on two... Big wins uh, so far with the Lizardmen, which I'm kind of surprised by because, you know, I really didn't have any practice games with this list. I mean, you've seen my battle reports before. Um, my lists really haven't ever looked like this before. So 
Uh, but yeah, I'm going into game three, two big wins. If I can finish out the day with another big win, tomorrow will be on the top table. So uh, pretty exciting stuff. Um, like, like always, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks.